Good morning, Grade 3. How are you doing? Today is Wednesday, April 22nd, 2020, 2024-22-20. Um, your work today for religion is to review your story about God's promises to the exiles, the story of Ezekiel. And um, in the questions on the second page there, it asks you to review the stories of Abraham and uh, Moses. You could even do Noah. And go. so just go back in your Bible history book there, your Bible story book, and review those uh, stories and think about how God keeps his promises and then what that means to us. That's a great reminder to us that God keeps his promises to us as well. All right. Um, continue your work on Castle. A few of you need to really practice your spelling words, okay? Um, utilize that packet work that you're doing to help you practice your spelling words as well. I know you have to be really careful to figure out, is it L-E or E-L? You can't tell by the sound. You have to just kind of memorize that this word has it the one way and this word has it the other way, okay? Uh, so work on that as well. Um, I have everybody except one that has read the book and taken the AR test on that, so keep up the good work on that. Uh, for math today, uh, grade three has ordering numbers, and we're going to go through that in just a moment. Grade four has formulas and distributive property, and we'll be going through that together as well. Uh, remember to keep doing your junior park ranger work. Today, uh, I need to know through your Google Classroom document, that I have assigned for you, you have some work to do with that. So you have it to look at at least three different Junior Park Ranger um, activities and decide which one you would like, okay? And then when your families come to pick up your materials for the last three weeks of school, ah, we have three weeks and three days left counting today. How about that? We can, we can do it, right? We can do it. All right, um, and so make sure that you fill out that out as you're doing your National Park Tours, please have your Google Classroom um, sheet available to you too so that you can um, just cut and paste that URL address that you're at right onto your page. Uh, that will help you a lot when you're doing that, okay? And uh, we have a Wisconsin history test today. I'll give you the answers for your crossword puzzle in just a moment. And let's see. Uh, reading response paragraph. I got two. I need two from two people. And today you write your next paragraph. So look at the next thing in line. I'm not going to tell you what it is today. I want you to figure it out. If you want to double check before you start writing that you are doing the right topic, feel free to call me. I will be more than happy to tell you if you have it right or wrong before you start writing. But I'd like you to try to figure it out. And the paragraphs that I read yesterday were awesome. Nice job. Okay. Um, so I made a few comments and things you might have to change or fix on them, but uh, in general, you did a really good job. So you're writing your third paragraph. It would be the second idea in your list of three. Okay, so that's as much information as I'll give you there. And then letters. Keep up the good work on your letters. They have been amazing. The residents are just going to love them. I get such a kick out of them myself. Uh, let's go through our answers for Wisconsin history, okay? So if you'll have your page handy, and if you need to pause the video at any time, that is a-okay. Alrighty. So number two, I was really impressed, weren't you, uh, at Wisconsin when I was reading through this selection again of how many innovative uh, machines were either invented here or uh, produced here, or um, produced means made, um, or improved here because of the um, crop farming that we did. That was pretty interesting. By the way, did you know that Micah Welly um, has an inventor in his ancestry? He does. It would be his great, great grandfather, Vincent Custer, um, did an improvement to the barn cleaner, the thing that hauls the poop out of the barn. And uh, he had a patent actually for that. And uh, we had blueprints and even a model that he made for it. It's pretty cool. Alrighty, um, here we go. On to our answers. Across, number two, what new invention was pulled by two horses and gathered grain in a bin? To across is the reaper, R-E-A-P-E-R. -E -E the nickname for early hogs of Wisconsin, number five, the prairie racers, P-R-A-I-R-I-E-R-A-C-E-R-S. -E what was the first cash crop of Wisconsin? <clears throat> Wheat, W-H-E-A-T. 
And what bug drilled into stalks of wheat to suck the juice? And that is number nine, the chinch, C-H-I-N-C-H. Going down, what does hydro stand for? Number one down is water. Hydro is water, W-A-T-E-R. What crop contributed to a world-famous brewing industry? Number three down is barley, B-A-R-L-E-Y. What town was famous for its milling industry? <clears throat> Excuse me, number four, Milwaukee, M-I-L-W-A-U-K-E-E. -E. And did you notice that's the largest city in Wisconsin still? What form of transportation solved the biggest problem of getting wheat to markets? And that's number six, railroad, R-A-I-L-R-O-A-D. Number seven, soil blanks. Soil blank is when crops are planted in the same soil year after year, depleting the soil of its nutrients. And so seven down, where are you? Seven down, there you go. Exhaustion, E-X-H-A-U-S-T-I-O-N. And you know how some uh, many farmers solve that today is they rotate the crops that they plant. Corn takes different nutrients, for example, than soybeans or alfalfa. And so they'll rotate what they plant in certain areas so that the soil doesn't get depleted of those nutrients and have soil exhaustion. And our last one, number 10, these animals were very profitable in the late 1800s and brought in enough money for families to pay off homes and land. Hogs, H-O-G-S. And then, did this section make you hungry, hungry down at the bottom there? All the fun food holidays? Which one was your favorite? Now you could choose a month. I thought maybe all of you would like prune breakfast month as your favorite. <laughs> that would not be my choice. Um, perhaps we all might like the National Chocolate Covered Anything Day on December 16th. So, which is your favorite? There's a spot on your test for that. Okay, uh, so that's it for Wisconsin history. Remember, use your paper and use this good thinker that you have. If there are two question marks, guess what? They want two answers. There are uh, several open response ones here and some that you have to uh, give quite a bit of detail. Like remember last week where we had to do the one with how is paper made? and you had to list all of the steps. There's another one similar to that. So please make sure that you use your paper, use your good brain, and take the time to do a good job. Your last few tests have been much better, and I can tell that you're putting the effort into it. So thank you very much. Alrighty, um, real quickly, we're gonna cut over to a screen here, and everybody can just pay attention here yet for a moment. Uh, third grade and fourth grade, you can help us out here. Uh, we're going to talk about putting numbers in order into the thousands. So what we have to do here, we have to look at all three of our numbers, 3,672, 3,712, 372. Now I want to put them in order this time from least to greatest, okay? Least to greatest. So least is going to be here, greatest is going to be over here. Well, it's easily easy to tell the least because... I know something that's only in the hundreds is going to be less than something in the thousands. So that would be my first one. Then of the last two, the thousands digit is the same. So that means I have to look at my hundreds digits to decide which one would come next. And you are right. 3,672 would be next. And that leaves 3,712 for the greatest, okay? Um, anytime that you're doing least to greatest or greatest to least or having you put numbers in order, one of the important things to do is listen to or follow the directions. Read carefully. What order they want it in? Do they want it least to greatest? Do they want it greatest to least? That's important, okay? And uh, for all of you, with all things, make sure that you're labeling things as well. All right, grade three, that's it for you. You can head to the hills and get your work done. Grade four. Let's do some math. Uh, pause the video if you haven't already to grab your math stuff. And let's go through a little bit of information on lesson 108 together. And um, I also wanted to go through uh, your test day activity from last week. So if you want to grab your math binder, uh, that would be great. And as I said, feel free to uh, just pause the video, grab those things, and we'll be set to go. Alrighty.
All right. First thing I want to go through is this test day activity, okay? And um, a couple of you had a little bit of struggled with a couple of parts of it, okay? And I, I just want to um, remind you uh, what I did is I wrote just a real brief um, explanation of what it means to be each thing. You're comparing and looking at parallelograms, trapezoids, and then uh, rhombus, okay? So I looked up those definitions in the back of my hardcover math book, and a parallelogram is two has two pairs of parallel sides. A trapezoid is a quadrilateral, so that means it has to have four sides, but it only has one pair of parallel sides. So the other pair is not. A rhombus is a parallelogram, so that means it has two pairs of parallel sides, and all four sides are equal length. So it's a special parallelogram, okay? Would a rhombus be a trapezoid? No, it would not, okay? So, we look at each of our shapes and it says classify the tiles into parallelograms and trapezoids. So they have a line for parallelograms and a line for trapezoids. So let's first of all look and see are there two pairs of parallel sides. So let's look at A. Yep, top and bottom are parallel, left and right are parallel. So A is a parallelogram. How about B? Yes. How about C? Yes. The bottom and the top are parallel if they keep going forever and the left and right are parallel. How about D? Yep, that's a square, we can tell that. How about E? Same as C. The left and right are parallel, the bottom and the top are parallel. How about F? Yes sir, left and right are parallel, bottom and top are parallel. How about G? Mm -hmm. Those two are parallel, but top and bottom are parallel. How about H? One pair, not another pair, okay? And sometimes it helps if you just put a pencil or something. Yep, they're going to intersect. So H would have to be a trapezoid because it has one pair of parallel lines, okay? Now, which ones are rhombi or rhombuses, okay? That means they are parallelograms with four sides of equal length. So we know what that special name is, is we also call it a square. So which ones of these are squares? Four sides of equal length. Or I see one that is actually not a square, but another parallelogram. B is a square. D has all four, look. This has all four, but even though it's slanted, so it's not a square, I misspoke. All right, so we would have B, D, and G. And so everything else, A, too long, too short. Too long, too short. Shorter, longer. Definitely longer, shorter. Not the same at all. In fact, these is, aren't the same length. These are, but the top and bottom are not. So all the others, A, C, E, F, and H would go down below. Now we have to do the bottom one here. And most of you got this right. Um, just it, you're explaining your thinking was all, wasn't always clear, okay? And you were right, H is the only one. The sides are not all the same length. There are several that that would fit, any of these down here. Two sides are parallel to each other, okay? That fits for a lot of them. Two sides are not parallel to each other. The only other one we had was H, and that would help us looking at this as well, okay? So several of them fit the first two clues, but only eight fit the bottom clue. Okay, so there we have that. All right. Um, one other one I wanted to look at because this is going to be important for our um, investigation coming up on Monday, okay? And most of you ended up getting the right answer, but I wanted you re to remind you that when you are counting cubes, you're finding the volume, okay? 
And we've done that before. And when you do that, you multiply how many across by how many up by how many back. So your formula for this is uh, length times width times depth, or our number equation would be 4 times 3 times 2. I have 4 in each row. I have 3 rows. I have 2 sections or 2 stacks of that whole thing. Okay? So here's one whole stack. And some of you did 12 times 2, which you counted all of these, but how did you get 12? An easy way to get it would be 4 times 3. Okay, so 12 times 2, 24. So just looking at how to get that 12 instead of counting each one, and maybe in your heads that's what you did, but this is the formula that you should be able to write out, not starting here. Okay, so just a little aside from that. All right, let's take a look at our math lesson then for today. If I could please switch my book out here so that we've got fourth grade. A couple different things to look at today. And um, if you look in your math book, they remind you of the formula to find area. Area is simply length times width. Haven't we used that one a lot? Okay. Uh, the formula for the perimeter of a rectangle. Now, oftentimes we just add, right? But you know that if it's a rectangle, the top and bottom are going to be the same length and each side is going to be the same width. So, as you see here, you can do that the formula would be parallel, or excuse me, not parallel, perimeter equals two times the length plus two times the width. The area of a square is its own special formula. The area of a square is the side squared. So if your side is four inches, it'd be four times four, 16 square inches. The perimeter of a square can also be a special formula because every side is the same length. You can simply multiply the number of each side times four, okay? Now, look at our example here. Okay, and before you turn the page, um, it does show us how to do it, but I'd like you to think about it. So this diagram shows the blueprint of a one-story house. What is the perimeter of the house? Well, we could simply add all of those parts, right? Now notice, here we have 40. Here we have 40. Here we have 20 and 20. What does that tell you? This side is also 40. Here we have 30. Look at the other one going vertically. Here we have 10. That's another 40. So we could do 30 plus 40 plus 40 plus 20 plus 10 plus 20 equals 160. But did you notice we had 40 plus 40 plus 40? plus 40, which is also 160. Now, what about finding the area? What are we gonna multiply? Well, you actually have to do the formula twice, and that's what they will show us on the other side. So turn the page with me, if you would, please. All right, so we're going to find the area of two sections. This is the same Shape that they had, 40, 40, 20, 10. So if this is 20, then this has to be 20 and 30, okay? Now they left off the 40 and the 20 here to help you not get confused with those numbers. We'll find the area of this rectangle up on top by doing 20 times 10. Then we'll find the area of this bottom rectangle by doing 30 times 40. So the small rectangle, 20 times 10 is 200. We've got two zeros, so we're gonna have two zeros in our answer. The large rectangle is 30 times 40. Three times four is 12. We've got two zeros, so we have to have two zeros in our answer. So that's 1,200. Then you have to add that together. So we had 200 square feet plus 1,200 square feet equals the total area of 1,400 square feet. 
do you need to show this work on your page when you're doing it? Y E S, yes, you do. All right. One more thing we're going to talk about today, and that is our distributive property. When you distribute something, you're, you're giving things out in an equal manner to distribute, okay? So uh, there are two formulas for the perimeter of a rectangle. One is this formula. Perimeter equals 2 times L plus W. L is length, W is width, okay? We had a different formula on the other side. P equals 2L plus 2W. But you notice that we're multiplying both of them times 2. So there's another way to write it, just like this. So here is our rectangle. And we have 8 centimeters and 5 centimeters. So you're going to do um, perimeter equals 2L plus 2W, which would be 2 times 8 plus 2 times 5. Or you can also put it into this type of formula. Perimeter equals 2 times 8 plus uh, 5, excuse me. Now we're not going to, let's turn it over here. All right. So, 2 times L plus W equals 2L plus 2W. So this expression, remember that's when it doesn't have an equal sign, are both multiplied by 2. So we can do 2 times 8, which is 16, plus 2 times width, which was 5, that would be 10, and you get 26. So either way, you get the same answer. Let's try this example. So use the distributive property to multiply. 4 times 20 plus 3. So first we do 4 times 20. That gives us 80. Look how they're writing out their answer. You write the equation, or that expression, first. Then you put your equal sign and do your work. 4 times 3 is 12. Now you're going to add those together and you get 92. Okay? So two things today, using formulas to solve and then also using the distributive property. Alrighty. Now in your practice, it's going to use this shape here to ask you to do, oh, I'm giving you the answers, got to cover those up, to find um, the perimeter, like that's going around the outside for that fencing, and then the area, okay? So how would you mark this one off? If you put it across right here, so if it's 10 feet on this section, this section is going to be 10 feet as well. So if this goes all the way across, this bottom line then is going to also be 10 and 10. It's going to be 20. It's going to equal that. And if you put this line right here, you're going to have an amount of 8 right here, right? 8 and 8. So when you're finding your area, you'd need these two and these two when you're finding your area, 12 and 10, 8 and 20. Okay, all right, unless you divide it this way, you could, you could make a, a spot right here, a rectangle here, couldn't we? There's more than one way to do it. Then you would do eight times 10 and 10 times 20. You do which one you think is easier, okay? Either way gives you the correct answer. Alrighty, and then on the top of the next page, you have uh, some formula work to do, okay? If you have any questions while you are figuring out your practice, make sure you give me a call and let me know. Come back to me. Hi. All right, so uh, that's it for today, fourth grade. Have a great day. If you haven't done your paragraphs for paragraph two, make sure you submit that to me today, and then I need to see paragraph three as well, okay? All right, have a great day.